Well, hi, gentlemen. Congratulations on America the Beautiful. Hi, Nancy. Nice to meet hi. you. Hi, so, Thank you. Sure. So, Mark, so you've produced award-winning wildlife films. What makes America the Beautiful different? Well, that's a good question because it's actually got all of the Earth's habitats in one continent. So it's a little bit like the rest of the world in one place, actually. Um, what makes it different, I think, I hope, for North Americans is it'll be a view of North America that people haven't seen before. I think there's a lot in it that will um, surprise you guys. And that was actually the real challenge because, um, you know, you are the sort of the most wildlife literate nation on earth in the sense that you all get into the bush, into the outback. Um, you're all great photographers. And even if you're not great photographers, you've got cell phones. So the challenge was how to make a series for, um, for a nation that really kind of knows a lot about wildlife. We didn't want to make something that was familiar or wasn't fresh. And that was our, our big challenge. So um, hopefully we succeeded with that. I understand that there were placed cinema camera grades on fighter jets. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I come from a, a kind of a fairly long background as a, as a cinematographer. And uh, most of the work has been on the ground for the last 12 to 14 years. And when Mark and I originally started talking about this, we were in development on a, on a fighter jet, an L-39 Albatross, which is a, a two-seat um, trainer fighter. Um, and we were building a, a camera system onto the nose for um, dynamic, um, both uh, higher altitude work and then very fast stabilized camera work. And thinking through how we would approach the natural history side of things, um, the, the hyperlapse and, um, you know, approaching weather and, and large geographical features, um, started to come into a clear view of this, this tool could be revolutionary in how we move a camera and where we can put a camera in three-dimensional space. So I think what y'all see in the series is a, is a, a lot of hard work from a lot of talented aviators and engineers um that have taken on the full weight of trying to show off a continent and a country in the most profound and and new perspective way that we could possibly do it um so the yeah the airplane was a was an interesting and and really dynamic tool for us to explore the country i think what's been great about it nancy is it's allowed us to show um landscapes in ways that um americans won't have seen them before and also weather as well, because you guys have the most dynamic weather of, of anywhere, because you know, you've got your north south mountains that funnel cold air from the north and warm air from the south, and you get this huge mess in the middle, which is crazy weather. <laughs> and what the jet has been brilliant for is filming, filming that weather. It allows us to get to weather quickly, um, and then it allows us to get away quickly if the weather gets um, a bit worse than we were expecting. So I think it's going to give people a view that they've not seen before, not just of the landscapes, but also of the weather. And of course, the landscapes and the weather combined shape a lot of what is amazing about your wildlife. You know, it's kind of hardy wildlife and resourceful wildlife and character for wildlife. And it's because it's had to cope with extreme weather and amazing landscapes. So it's proved to be a really um, great tool the uh, fighter jet for um, giving this wildlife series a very, a very different personality, a very different kind of stamp. We are pretty spoiled over here. So what was one of your favorite landscapes? Oh, well, Greg, you better, you better answer that one. You flew through them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was trying to think, I mean, we, we filmed so many of the beautiful places of this country, but I, I have to say, I mean, in all the places I've traveled, I had never um, been to Alaska before I went in, in March of 2021. And to see that, I mean, in, in one week long period, in one day, we had the ability to fly from Anchorage all the way up to Dead Horse across the Yukon over um, the Alaska range, and then all the way back through and landed in Anchorage at the end of the day and got to see the sea ice, um, the, the ice fields, the glaciers. I mean, it was just a tremendous um, uh, target rich area from a photographic standpoint. And 
the beauty of the light and and the conditions i've i've never seen anything like it so that was that was a pretty significant one for us um and then like mark said alluded to the storms i mean that was that was the most profound um things that i've ever seen through a lens before personally I think what people will be really amazed by is some of the iconic landscapes that they think are familiar to them. So for example, flying through Yosemite or flying through the Grand Canyon, those are places that people feel like they know or flying through Monument Valley, but when they see them in this way, I think they'll be very surprised by how, how fresh and different they feel and how they get a real sense of how those places fit in the bigger landscape. That's how I felt about Monument Valley. Yeah. I like that area and it was unbelievable. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's an amazing way to see it, isn't it? And it does, it does put all those different landscape, landscapes into perspective that you can sort of fly a single shot that, that goes through sort of, um, you know, the canyon lands and um, sort of pinnacles and all these different amazing landscapes. And you can see how you know, mountains create deserts that give way to plains and prairies. And you can see that all in a single shot, which is something that's never really been done before. And although you can see those things from satellite, it's very disengaging. Whereas when you're flying through them um, from the jet, it is, it is really um, exciting. So you had a few uh, hero stories. Which one was one of your favorites? Well, you know, the one I think is my favorite is because it's, no one's expecting you to open a series about North America with a squirrel. <laughs> I think everyone goes, oh, they're gonna open with wolves. They're gonna open with a grizzly bear, a mountain lion. Um, we thought, no, we're gonna open with a squirrel. We want this to be surprising. Um, and I think what was, what was nice about that is we've, we've tried on this series to film the big familiar animals in very different ways. Um, and also to show the small heroes in ways you wouldn't expect. So my personal favorites are, are things like the squirrel protecting its, its um, pine cones against grizzly bears and, and black bears and porcupines and being the kind of the hero in that. Or the little kind of baby oak toad that's the size of a fingernail, which goes and steals the ants from a sundew plant. I think, you know, amazing. Didn't know about that. Also didn't know that your caterpillars change color uh, in the fall, just like the leaves do. It's those little stories, which I think are amazing. I mean, who knew that a caterpillar goes from green to red, just so that it's still camouflaged in the fall. I, I didn't know that. Um, or that there are pitcher plants that eat salamanders. Um, you know, I didn't think carnivorous plants ate vertebrates. I thought they ate insects, you know? So there's, there's lots of really surprising little stories that I think um, people won't expect. I watch, other series about North America that have been made before this one and the same, the same scenes come again and again and again. And we really tried to avoid that. We tried to, anything that you've seen before, we wanted to film in a very different way. And we also wanted to film things that people have never seen before and perhaps didn't even know lived in North America to give it a sort of a real freshness. And of course, you know, the landscape photography and the, the weather photography that Greg did just just finishes off that whole feeling of it being different um, and a different view of the continent that hopefully people have ever had before. I, th I think the tornadoes, I think it just being up close and personal, because I, 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 Mark and I had talked about that for so long leading up to this and the, the, um, the safety considerations and the, the technical um, approach and how we wanted it to look and how we wanted it to feel and I think once we, we finally um, got the sequence in the can, um, I think that was probably my, my favorite moment I've had on, on all of my career in, in film because um, I don't think many people have ever seen that if anybody has ever seen that shot like that. I, it's, a, it's a first um, without question to put a camera um, that close and up, up, up close and personal with a tornado um, but also be able to transition through altitudes and give entirely new perspectives on what big weather looks like. So that that for me was a was a profound um, a profound moment in the series. And I think looking at it in the editorial, laid in with the music, and and cut with the animal behavior, um, it just it's just great. And that is why you are the cinematographer. <laughs> <laughs> the tornado. <laughs> And just to wrap up, we know the bison is a native of North America. 
and that's who you guys are using as a cover. But mm -hmm. was there another species that you considered? Yeah, that's a good question. There is, there is some artwork actually that, that uses mountain lion, there's some artwork that uses bears. Um, I don't know why the bison rose to the top particularly as the favorite, but we have absolutely got versions of that with different animals. So we were spoiled for choice in North America. You've got lots of great hero animals. Um, but like I say, my favorite one is actually the, the small one, but that, that design doesn't work so well with a toad. <laughs> Agree. It would look like a giant toad. <laughs> it would look really weird, wouldn't it? Yeah, that wouldn't work. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations. And this is going to come out on the perfect day, 4th of July. Yes, I know. We were delighted when, when National Geographic said that was the launch day because it, it felt really fitting, but it's a real privilege to be asked to go out in that slot because no doubt there's hot competition for that, for that particular date. So I think it's, um, it's a sign of how excited um, we all are about the series. Um, and also it's a, it's a great vote of confidence. So I really hope that people enjoy it half as much as we enjoyed making it. They will, they will. I know I did. Thank you so much again and congratulations. Thank you, Nancy.